Hey everyone, Shea Bear 1000 here. Today, we're gonna to find the miss on this Corvette. Um, I've already found the miss, but I'm gonna show you how I found it. We're gonna run a compression test if my compression gauge will work. Um, then we're gonna go from there and see what see what might be causing it. But uh, I can tell you it's not spark. I'll tell you why in just a minute. Stick around guys, I'll show you what I did. Okay guys, I did find a dead cylinder in number five. That's one, three, five, and then seven. Then over you got two, four, six, and eight. Um, what I did was I started up and I pulled, uh, started pulling plug bars off one by one. And they all made a difference except for that one. Now there could be all kinds of things causing that. Now, I do know it's got spark. I pulled the spark plug out. Uh, I actually broke one so I went over to the Toyota Tacoma and uh, it's got the same exact plugs in it so I took one out of it and stuck in well I stuck this back in this broken piece and I put the plug in up against that header and it's sparking so I know it's not a spark issue but what you do while it's running, you pull these off one by one. And you'll hear it bog down. You put it back on, it'll come back. When I got to that one, it made no change. That's telling me that's a dead cylinder. Now that could be this injector right here. That could be, which I don't think it's anything internal, because this engine has no blow by. Uh, there's nothing coming out the exhaust. There's you know nothing coming out the valve covers when it's running So I don't think it's a cracked ring or uh, a cracked piston or a burnt piston I don't know it could be in the valve system could could be in the valve train although it's not making any noises um, These injectors I put in not too long ago, but geez all I do is move it around here and start it up so uh, but we're going to check that too but I'll start this up and I'll get you set up and I'll show you exactly how I did that I did that with these pair of pliers and for God's sakes guys make sure you have rubber handle even though this is rubber handle I had a spark jump out of the end of this thing so I went ahead and put some black tape on it and I'll pull this off and I'll show you I don't know if you'll be able to hear on the camera but I'll try to get the camera zoomed in down here with the mic so you can hear the difference in the changes. So let me get this started up and warmed up, and then I'll show you how to do that. All right, guys, listen. Listen real close to the engine. I got that plug wire loosened up so it'll come off real easy, and you should hear it change. You hear it bog down? hear the difference now when I go to number five it makes no change that's telling me that cylinder's dead no change at all so that's our miss and I know it's getting spark on that cylinder, um, but I will get my spark tester and we'll plug it in here and we'll see if it's, we'll see if it's lighting up. Now I have this special stethoscope here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this right up against each one of these injectors and see if I can hear a click and I should hear a click 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 click. You guys are not going to be able to. 
but I'll be able to hear it if it's clicking so I'm going to check these and if that one's clicking then there could be another issue we'll run a compression test on it so let's fire this back up Okay, well, it's kind of not a good sign. It is clicking. Doesn't mean it's spraying fuel, but it is clicking. But in order to change that one injector, I would have to pull all this back off again. The intake, or the, the plenum, and the throttle body. I'd have to take all that off just to get to the fuel rail to take that one injector out. Um, so... I'm going to pull this spark plug out. I won't bore you with that. And uh, we're going to uh, we'll run a compression test on it. I don't know if this gauge is going to work because it's already sitting on like 60. But hopefully it has more than that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that spark plug out of here, and then I'll get this screwed in, and I'll show you. All right, guys, we're going to watch this gauge. I already had Monkey come out and crank this for me while I watched that gauge. It's jumping up to about 200, 210. Now, I don't know if that's correct, but that's telling me it is getting something. What I did was I screwed that in where the spark plug goes. I unhooked the battery. The wire that goes up to the distributor that says battery i i unplugged it you don't want it to start well i don't want it to start and i gotta hold it wide open so you guys watch that and you'll see what i'm talking about it's jumping up but this thing will not hold pressure so uh i thought i had two i remember borrowing one off of her dad and i took it back to him and i don't think that's the one i borrowed so uh i don't know where it is but watch that gauge Wide open throttle. Okay, now I'm going to have to play that back and make sure you guys seen that. But, uh, looks like I'm going to be taking this valve cover off again. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do is pull that valve cover off of there. And I'm going to make sure those two valves are opening all the way. If one of them is not opening and there's not a bent rocker arm or a broken rocker arm or bent push rod, then that would be a cam load. Now I've got a camshaft in there, but the thing of it is it's still in a box and it has a number on it, but did he change the cam? I don't know. I don't know if he put a high performance cam in and that's the original cam or if that's a high performance cam he was planning on putting in here. Um, it, you can't tell, I mean, it doesn't look like it was used, but kinda it does, but, now the problem with that is it's not, I'm worried about how much power, cause you know, we're never really gonna race this thing or anything like that, we're looking for a cruiser. We just wanna cruise it. The problem with that is, if I put that other cam in here and it's not the cam that goes with that box, I won't know what to set the valves at. So if the intake valve is not opening, you know, it could be a cam lobe. So what I'm saying is I don't know the lift and duration. The lift is how far that lobe will open that valve. And the duration is how long it keeps it open. So like it's an over it's an egg shape. So like if it's like, where you guys at? If it's like this, it's not going to stay open as long. But if it's wider up at the top, it's going to stay open longer to let more fuel in. So, and your lift is how high that lobe is, and how high it is determines how far that valve opens. If you go too high on it, 
your valve is going to open too high and it's going to hit the top of the piston or well the piston is going to hit the valve and you're going to bend the valve and maybe crack a piston you're going to have problems so if it comes down to where it's a lobe off the cam it doesn't sound like it when it's running usually usually you can hear a popping it's not doing that but that's I've, I've seen cam lobes wear off and it doesn't pop you know there's cam lobes worn off on that Toyota and it, it never made any popping noise it was just a miss um, so if that's the case I, I will just put a, a another cam in it that I know what it is because um, I don't want to take that chance and then you're guessing on you know how much you need to adjust the the rocker arms you know adjust your valves you do that with the rocker arms but I'm gonna go ahead I remember right and I know I got to take one of these bolts out here because I can see it coming through it stops it from coming up out I got to take off the alternator wire and then these up here it's pretty easy I'm gonna move I'm gonna pull the plug wires off move them out of the way and uh, we'll just go from there um, and we'll see if there's a problem up here on top I remember I had to adjust one valve it came it came loose but I'm thinking it was one three. I'm thinking it was number three and not number five. But it could have been number five. So it could be something simple like that, which I hope it is, because if not, I gotta pull the whole top end of this engine off, take the lifters out and everything, pull the front of the engine off, radiators out, the radiator out, and the uh, condenser for the air conditioner and all that's gotta come out because it's gonna have to come straight out. But if I got to do that, I'm putting a P. Jackson gear drive timing system in it. And I want the loud one. I want it whining. Uh, guys like that, they... Oh, I got the quiet P. Jackson in it. Well, really, actually all it does, guys, it's just gear to gear instead of a chain. But uh, I like to hear that stuff. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and record this, but I'll speed you up through it. Um... And in order to take that bolt out, yeah, I got to take this back off. This came loose one time. It was making a little noise. And I thought, what the hell is that? It was this. In order to do that, I got to take the damn belt off. And that's kind of a pain. Um, so anyway, guys, let me get everything ready. And then we'll start on this. Oh, I also have to unhook the battery. Uh, because this is a constant ground or constant power so when i take that off that wire's live if it touches something i'm welding stuff i don't want to weld anything on here hang tight guys Okay, this is number five. Now I gotta put this, hook this battery cable up, but first I gotta make sure this don't short out. Now I gotta hook the battery cable up, and we're gonna crank this over and see if these are moving. They should go down and up, up and down. All right, so hopefully they are as something else but I think we're down to internals I mean I don't I can't turn that pusher on I can turn that one but let's uh
All right, now we're gonna crank it over. Watch these two guys. And we'll see if they're going up and down and I can't see them from in here very well. Okay, from what I see, they look like they were going up and down pretty good. So, yeah, well, it's not a cam lobe, so that's good, but the bad thing is, what is it? Could be a burnt valve or a cracked valve, but it's just not popping like they do, you know, when they, when you got a, when you got a burnt valve or a cracked valve, usually they make a popping noise. Um, this is the exhaust valve, this is the intake valve here. Nothing's cracked. They feel good. Like I said, it wasn't tapping or anything, it's just got a mess. So, could it be a clogged injector? Yes, it could. It could be a clogged injector, but I hear a pulse and usually Usually you won't hear them clicky clacking if they're clogged. I'll have to do some more research, but usually I've had them clogged and they won't make a noise and I've took them out and cleaned them and then they started clicking again. Um, but I wish I had a better compression tester. If I had a better compression tester, that would really tell me because if it was a cracked or burnt valve, you're gonna it's gonna leak now the only thing I can do is maybe see if I got a way to put air into this I don't know if I got the right fittings to shoot air into that and see if I can hear them see they're both closed now so that'd be the perfect time to see if I could hear any air leaking up out of there like you'll hear it like You'll hear it coming out the exhaust if it's an exhaust valve, or you'll hear it coming out the intake if it's an intake valve. You'll hear that air. Let me go see what I got. Okay, guys, this is what I came up with. Now, it's leaking right here. But I can squeeze this and put a 100 pound of pressure in there, and I can't hear it coming out. <coughs> I've got the throttle wide open, uh, propped open. I can't hear it coming out the exhaust or the intake. There's a hundred pounds, but when I listen, I can't hear it coming out the exhaust or the intake. So, well, at least we know it's not, at least we know it's not a camshaft, but at the same time, is it a leaky valve? You know, if, it, if that thing's putting close to 200 PSI in it, you know, um, compression that could be enough to bypass whatever crack or leak it may have to where 90 to 100 pounds ain't doing it. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to get the right hoses to do a leak down test on it. What you do is you is you fill it up with pressure, you shut your air off, you know, you unplug the air and it should stay that way and then uh, then you come back you watch your gauge and then you come back in a little bit and it shouldn't lose any pressure but yeah I mean I don't know I've never had this issue before usually I can find it in just a few minutes but I'm not sure you know maybe that injector you know maybe it is clogging you know I don't I just maybe not putting enough fuel in it but it's not apparently getting any fuel or something because you know it's just a dead miss it's a dead cylinder and I mean that right there if that was a cracked piston or or something um, you know I'd hear it coming out the block somewhere uh, probably up in here you know you, you would hear it 
you'd hear going down in an oil pan, whatever. I can't hear any air leaking other than what's right here. Of course, it's hard to tell, but usually you can hear them pretty, pretty plain. So I'm not going to bore you with this, but I'm going to put this back together. And um, that's about all I can do with it for right now until I can get the right compression tester, you know, that's going to hold. Because my compression tester is just not... I mean, it, it should be on zero right now, and it's not. So that's probably why it's going up to 210, but it should hold pressure once you put pressure in it, and it's not. It's not doing that either. So I don't know. Let me get this back together. It looks like it's going to rain again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me get this put back together, and then we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I got rained out. I got it back together. Still got a miss, you know, because we didn't fix anything. But I don't know what the problem is. I think the first thing I will do is I'll have to go rent a compression tester, a good one. That way I can do a leak down test on it. I don't hear anything, but, you know, that way I can really jack it up 120 PSI or whatever and check for a leak down. And if there's no leak down, then even though that fuel injector's, uh, it's clicking, it's still, you know, I don't know, maybe it's it's just, it's got a clog in it, not putting enough fuel in there, but it's definitely a dead cylinder. I don't think it's mechanical, but, you know, who knows? We'll just have to see. So we'll get back on it as soon as I can go rent a good compression tester and we'll do a leak down test together on it. And then we'll... We'll know from there what we're going to do so if it's leaking down then yeah something's you know not sealing right but if it's not then it's got to be a fuel issue like i said i you know i could hear it it's clicking like it's supposed to but hell that doesn't mean anything i guess uh if it's not getting fuel in it could be a clog i don't know we'll see thanks for watching guys appreciate it thanks for spending saturday afternoon with me yeah i got soaked <laughs> Uh, it really came down, it really started pouring, so I put everything away, and then I just went ahead and came back out and finished what I was doing. So, all right, guys, Shea Bear, the Myth Man, the Legend, gone for now. We'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, thanks for all your well wishes to Monkey with her birthday. She appreciates it, and I appreciate it. Y'all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye bye, and take care.